Well, I am here with C.L. Van Lu, author of Butcher Heist, the Easter Wood Unfolding Series, and his latest work, The Desert Queen, um, book number one in the Sundial Odysseys series, which went live today on Kickstarter. And it is an awesome opportunity to connect with him and to let you know about this work that he is putting out there, this passion project of his. And so, Colin, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dan. I, I appreciate it. I um, uh, appreciate you reaching out. Um, my wife and I were, we were up in Wisconsin Dells actually just a couple days ago. And um, so I, it, you know, Berghoff was like, that's, that's kind of how we, how we knew each other with, with, with mm -hmm. catering and um, living here in the Midwest, I feel like there's no way to escape the Berghoff. Mm -hmm. So we walked into this antique mall in Wisconsin Dells, like three hours away. And I walked in, I was, I was there for about 30 seconds. And I thought, I'm going to see a Berghoff thing here. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know where it's going to be, but I have a feeling it's going to be beer related and it's going to be somewhere. And within 15 minutes, there it was, upper corner of one of the booths, a Berghoff like commemorative, like plaque beer thing. And I was like, it's, it will be with me for the rest of my life that I live here in, in the Midwest and Chicago land area. Like it, it is unavoidable. It, it is. Um, yeah. We um, we both worked catering for yes. one of the most um, famous restaurants in downtown Chicago. It was yeah. actually the first restaurant to get its liquor license after yep. prohibition was repealed. Um, and so that was um, definitely an opportunity where we got to connect. Um, yeah, a, at, lot of, a lot of late nights and a lot of very unusual places around the city. <laughs> uh definitely definitely well now you are a multi-published author and you are releasing this new book the desert queen um yeah. and tell tell me um what would you say has been the most challenging aspect of being an author oh gosh that's a yeah um I, I love to write. I love to tell stories. I love to invent. I hate iterating. Um, I hate uh, process improvement, which my wife, um, you know, if she could hear me say, say that, uh, she would probably be holding a knife to my throat uh, because that's her thing is, is, is like slow, iterative, uh, improvement until things are like the best that they can possibly be. And I like within me hate every moment of that now. Um, and, and so for, for me, like writing, being an author, the absolute hardest thing is going from, from draft one, my rough draft to draft 12, 25, the, the final draft, because everything within my soul just hates like, okay, here we go. We're going to do this again. And, and I say that, and then I think like, okay, here is draft one. That was bad. Like that, that is, that is unequivocally, no one will, no one will deny bad to that's my final draft. And that was pretty good. Like there's no JK Rowling, but like, that was pretty good. And, and it, it comes through that area of process, which um, I loathe. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the hardest part of being an author for me. Well, even JK Rowling, her, her books from book number one um, of the Harry Potter series to book number seven were drastically different in the quality yeah. of writing. And so that continued process of growing and getting better um, that you have done in the um, 20 plus versions of your book, yeah. I'm sure has, has definitely empowered what, what we're going to see and what we're going to enjoy with so. the Desert Queen. Yeah, um, I really hope so. Well, I... I have um, three boys. I have okay. a two-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a nine-year-old. 
Okay. And so when I saw that you were putting this out and that it's right for that seven to 11 age range, I'm like, this is perfect for my boys. We, we are definitely going to get it. We are going awesome. to um, read this every night, either my wife or I reads a book to our boys. And so um, I've got one book that I read to them and she's got one book that she reads to them. And we, uh, we kind of give the other person a break, but also get to have that um, connectivity time with our boys. And I am certain that this is going to be one that as we read, we, we are going to be anxiously awaiting number two <laughs> in the series. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Well, the good news is, is, Number two and number three are both about five drafts in already, so lots to go. Um, but uh, but but you know th this process for the Desert Queen um, that started in the idea first took shape in August of 2022, and it's you know it's it's October of 2023. It took a year. Um, fortunately, the process will be much faster going forward. But um, but yeah, it was a it was a long, hard road to to kind of get get there, but um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to, uh, to to pumping out number two, pumping out number three. I've got ten books in the series planned, actually. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I am really excited about that. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about the um, the balance and the tension between uh, this writing passion project and um, being present for your family and, oh, and how that plays out. Like re regular, regular life, um, yeah. like doing, doing all the things that, that, that we're kind of called to do. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I've got an unusual situation, just, just frankly speaking. Um, uh, Kirstie and I, we run a, uh, process improvement, uh, business process improvement consulting firm. And so we spend, a lot of time uh, at our desks, talking to people in a you know in the in the corporate world. Um, I spend a lot of time in front of spreadsheets, and um, and and so you know then that means like I also have this like you said this passion project. I, I love doing it. I love writing. I've I've been you know writing for um, for many years, and and then I've got two tiny humans that probably deserve more of my attention than anybody else in the world, except for my wife. Like, like there, I said it. Um, <laughs> and, and, and so it is this kind of like constant balance of, okay. Is like, have I devoted enough time for, for my kids to feel loved, to feel cared for? Are they coming in and, and, and asking me and saying like, like, daddy, you're not spending any time with me. Daddy, you're not playing with me. Like, those are red flags. Like, those are like, okay, like business can wait. The writing can definitely rate, can, can definitely wait. Um, like this needs to get put on the, on the back burner. We're going to spend some time like going to the park, playing superhero imagination for the thousandth time this week. Um, uh, my my daughter and I have a show that we that we watch together, and it's a I will I would say fairly controversial show, but it gives us lots of great opportunities. We're gonna sit down. We're gonna, like, hey, that was a bad choice that these kids are making. Like like we're like here's the reason why that was a bad choice. Or you know what? That was actually a really good choice. Like let let's let's talk through why that that set of decisions was hard, but but good. Um, there's there's. And so I think like, as I'm talking through, like, as I'm thinking through what does balance look like? Um, it's, it's hard. I'm glad my, my son is in half day kindergarten because that's all my town offers. Um, because it means that I've got like a solid three hours every day where I can get stuff done. But at like, in reality, um, you like listening to the warning signs, like, like listen to what the kids are saying. Like, are they, are they acting like they need me? Are they like, they, then they yeah they they need me um is there dinner on the table like my my wife 
it, she she leads the business, so she makes the money. Um, with and I love cooking. Uh, and so and so like did dinner make it on the table? Like if it didn't, like you you probably dropped the ball, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's 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 what I'll say. Um, Jerry Jenkins has some really great stuff. Uh, has written some written and said some really interesting stuff in this arena. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to take a look further, like he's got some great advice. Awesome. Um, what does rest look like for you and your family? Oh, so that's a, that's a great question. Um, we, uh, we read, um, John Mark Comer's book, Garden City about five years ago. And, um, he, he talks through, uh, the, the work and rest, uh, push pull dynamic, and one thing that we really took away from that book is we need to set up a a like a one day a week where we're where we're not working, um, you know, call it what you will. We call it Sabbath, mm -hmm. um, and and that for us um, that that looks different. Like my wife loves being in the garden, so whenever the weather's nice, like she will be out there gardening. I don't particularly like that. Like it's not interesting to me. I do like writing. Um, and my wife looks at me and she's like, you're writing like seriously on Sabbath. And I'm like, yeah, because it's restful. Um, like that, like that is life giving to me. And so I think like, Hey, what does rest look like? It looks like the thing that gives you life. Um, one of the things that we kind of learned recently though, is if I haven't, oh, if the family hasn't done the dishes or if there's a bunch of cards laying all over the floor from Friday night, or, you know, we we're pretty flexible on the actual day. So like if we do our Sabbath on Sunday, for example, like if there's a bunch of cards lay like from the, from the card fiasco that happened Saturday night, like we're going to walk there, walk downstairs on Sunday morning. And it's going to be like, Oh, this is not restful. Like this environment is kind of filthy. So we need mm -hmm. to clean up. We're going to spend 20 minutes cleaning up and we're going to feel great about the rest of our day. But like, it will not be a restful Sabbath for us if we don't go get out and do that. And so one of the things that we've, I mean, it's, it's an iterative process. It is a process that we do not get right every single week. We, we try, mm -hmm. um, but we also try to make it super special for the kids. And I think like, Hey guys, we're going to like, we're going to be excited about Sabbath. We're going to do things that are fun. Um, we're going to do things that you like to do. We're going to do them together as a family. Like all of these things are kind of like an ingredient in the stew, for example. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I was wondering if you would give us a preview of what to expect from the Desert Queen. Yeah, I'd love to. So um, just kind of like high level. Uh, Desert Queen is it's following um, a, a fairly unknown uh, historical character. And that's what the entire series is going to do. It's going to follow historical characters from around the world that that like really shape the world that we live in whether we see it or not some it will be very obvious some a lot less so but um it's going to be characters that that for the most part people don't really know but that um but that that had some kind of an event that happened in their in their lives um it's going to be quirky it's going to be uh, when, and, and when I say event, like a, a significant event that like was part of that, of that, of that shaping. Um, sorry. Uh, and it's going to be quirky. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. There's going to be like some exploration of like, how do people do life in other countries? Um, there's, you know, there's some time travel. So, so, uh, so that's incorporated. Um, there's, there's a little bit of question is like, how is the time travel happening? Like, is it, is it science fiction? Is it fantasy? So, um, just to be completely honest, I'm not even sure how that's playing out right now. We might get to the end of the books and I still might not have an idea. We'll see. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just in terms of like, what is the, what does the text sound like? I'm going to read a few paragraphs. Is that, is that okay? That would be awesome. Awesome. We are going to go in character. Uh, so you guys are going to get to hear, um, some, some, uh, we'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see how this goes. All right, here we go. Chapter one, vampire. Amelia asked, no, I don't think so. You're kidding, right? Amelia's cousin, Luther, said, have you ever seen Grandpa Joe? Pasty white, dresses like he's a thousand years old, has a weird accent. How does that not scream vampire to you? Um, maybe because he's the nicest person in the world? 
Amelia replied as she inspected a display case that held several ceramic bowls. Luther leaned over her shoulder. And you don't think that's a trap to lure us in? You weren't here for Thanksgiving. You cooked with a lot of garlic. I don't think a vampire could have handled that, Amelia said as they wandered down one of the halls in Grandpa Joe's mansion. The house was large and old, made of stone and dark wood that Luther said reminded him of castles in England. Display cases lined the walls, filled with treasures from all over the world. The house smelled of mothballs and old books and felt like a smaller version of the nearby museum where Grandpa Joe worked. The hall the cousins were in now had beautiful dishes from China, suits of armor from Europe, and even a tusk, or even the tusk of a woolly mammoth. All right, there we go. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, Thank you. I, we, we, we haven't talked about this before, but my kids and I love all things um, fantasy and vampires. I love um, it. There are no and, vampires. So, I'm sorry. But, but, <laughs> it's, but it's about the only still, vampire mentioned, but, but yes. But still, this it, it draws you in. Um, it gives you a good description of kind of what to expect this grandpa that's this um, really nice guy, but has a little bit of a demeanor of a pleasant vampire and just kind of. Yes, um... yes, very much. <laughs> um, and, and so you know that, it's beautiful. Um, that, like, that whole opening sequence, highly influenced by um, a, a very good friend of mine who... Um, in a former life was a professional editor and kind of does it on the side. And she, she did an amazing job of basically kicking me to the curb multiple times. And uh, I'm much happier now with, and, and you know what, like everybody who's getting the book um, is also getting a copy of the rough draft. So um, if you want to see like, what does it look like to go from rough draft to about 25 iterations later, that's the difference. Like, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the skeleton's there, but like, mm -hmm. like it's a skeleton compared to a, like, theoretically fully formed body. <laughs> That's so cool. So, yeah. Fun, fun, uh, fun little bonus for, for, uh, for everyone that I'm excited to, to give out. Yeah, we will definitely be putting the link um, to your Kickstarter fund awesome. in the um, in with these videos, and um, so you guys will definitely want to check out the link and description there. And as you're looking back on your history of um, of wanting to become an author, who are some of the authors and um, that have inspired you in your journey? Man, that's a yeah, that's a a, a, a tough question. Um, so honestly, the like the one that 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 just was hands down the person that that was an author that that really meant the most to me was my grandmother. Um, and she did not write uh, like kind of your standard fair, as it were. Um, she did some deep genealogical work um, uh, on her her side of the family and wrote um, quite a bit in that in that realm uh, about the research that she did. Um, apparently, I am uh, related to a near murderer. Um, uh, her <laughs> grandfather thought he killed somebody in a bar fight in Sweden. And uh, apparently the the uh, sentence for killing somebody in Sweden in the uh, late 1800s was death. And so he's like, I'm not sticking around here to get killed. And so he flees to America and, uh, and you know, finds out a few years later that he that he didn't kill the guy, but but definitely thought he did when it when it happened. So um, uh, but but um, yeah, I, I loved the. I loved the idea of writing. Um, she was a really, really inspirational person to me. Um, uh, just such a like calm, formative, uh, foundational person in my life. Um, in terms of in terms of just like sheer brute force storytelling, uh, Kay Applegate, um, the Animorphs author, a little bit more mm -hmm. like for our kids' generation. Uh, mm -hmm. The one and only Ivan, I believe. Um, I, I honestly never really expanded beyond the Animorph series because I'm a nerd, uh, apparently. Um, 
uh, honestly, like love that, love that series to death. Uh, um, Gary Paulson of Hatchet. Um, I read that, that single book when I was like 12 and it stuck to me so firmly that when I decided to finally pick it up and reread it again in July, um, uh, I, I remembered most of the book, uh, almost, almost verbatim. And, um, and, and so like him as an author, kind of like, we're going to, we're going to think through like all of these processes within the, within the, the survival, we're going to think through all of these steps in, within the survival process, um, just was super, super fascinating to me as a, as a kid and as an adult. Um, and then just like some some heavy hitting uh, classical authors, Alexandre Dumas, um, I absolutely love. Uh, um, I'm completely blanking on his name. Uh, uh, really blanking on the book now. Um, my goodness, the guy, uh, the the windmill guy with the uh, Don Quixote, uh, oh. uh, uh, Cervantes. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and then of course, you know, some, some other kind of more modern authors, uh, uh, Tolkien, um, and, and Lewis, um, especially within the Chronicles of Narnia, um, all, all like played a, a strong role in like, Hey, you can, you can write good stories. Like, and, and these guys and gals have done some amazing work that you can, that you can take some really cool ideas from. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, as I was preparing for us to get together for this, I started um, flipping through some of your old um, posts and pictures. I think I saw a picture of you with Brandon Sanderson. Oh, man, you got to that one. Yeah. So let's see if I can. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's got to be around here somewhere. So there. Uh... Yeah. So. Um he's phenomenal, right? Like mm -hmm. such a great storyteller. And I had a, I had a, a friend of mine tell me recently, like get into the Stormlight trilogy. And I'm like, dude, I have no time. Cause I know like if I get in, like I won't be coming out and I don't have time to like do a get in and come out. That's my wife. She's, she's running through Hello. the camera there uh, looking for the book. So I, I read the wheel of time series and, um, and loved it. And of course, like, um, uh, Brand or Sanderson finished the series and mm -hmm. so when the last book was coming out it was like right when I was finishing the series because I was a bit of a okay. late adopter there and uh, and so my pastor um, at, at New Life Community Church he was like hey I'm gonna go check out this uh, the, this this signing that we're doing do you want to come I know you've been reading the series and I was like absolutely and so um, oh there it is it was right behind me my goodness that's why we didn't see it <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, Memory of Light, um, and it wasn't just Sanderson who signed it. It was um, uh, it was uh, Robert Jordan's uh, uh, widow. She signed it, and I think that somewhere in there, like the editor signed it. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, that's Harriet. So <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, Robert Jordan's widow. But um, yeah, that was a that was a fun night. Um, yeah, we had a we had a really great time. <laughs> That is awesome. Um, yeah, I you referred to yourself as a late adopter to the series. I, I probably started the series maybe two years ago, and I'm okay. like four yep. or five books in. My wife is like eight books in. She started about the same time I did, yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah. she's a faster They're reader than I am. They are behemoths. Um, I, I'm actually a terrible reader. I'm, I'm atrocious. Uh, I, I do most of my book intake through audiobooks. Um, I okay. try to, I try to get through like 75 to hundred books a year and almost all of them are audiobooks played at like two to three and a half times speed. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to crank through the wheel of time series within like a month and a half or two. Yeah. One, because the, the series is awesome. But but two, because I'm listening to the whole thing at like two and a half times speed and working on like house projects or, you know, whatever it is <laughs> I've got going on on the side. So, um, yeah, that like and that's one of the things that I learned, like as a as a student, as an author, um, I have to do my editing. Um, basically, like my best editing happens when I 
listen to a audio playback of my of my book, which, you know, like text to speech um, technology has been amazing for me because I'm like, oh, I can finally like hear what it sounds like. Like, oh, that like that rhymed. It's not supposed to rhyme. And I wouldn't have picked up on that, like reading mm -hmm. it with my eyes. I probably would have picked up on it reading with my voice, but like I'll lose my voice if I keep doing that. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, uh, fun facts. But no, I yeah, I, um, it's it is a massive slog. I think it's like a 1.9 million word series. I'm just some unbelievable amount of text. Oh yeah, I, I think the last one I finished was more than 800 pages. Yeah. Um, and um, I think the next one is supposed to be like 1,200 or something yeah, like that. I think it is. It was, um, yeah, that it, it it's so good. He, um. He's phenomenal with the world building. He is. Um, yeah. yeah. Some sometimes because he's so he has so vividly put the world together, yeah. it can be a little laborious reading it. It can. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, 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 <laughs> um yeah, it's a it is a heavy lift. Uh mm -hmm. and and one of the things that was super interesting, because uh Sanderson um and uh and and Harriet gave a a talk um, as part of this reading, and they said like, we literally have to sit down and like go through this massive document where like all of these characters they all have backstories, mm -hmm. they all have like interconnections, and like there's there was somebody on the like editorial staff of, of this series that was like the know it all person, and so whenever like whenever they had questions about like what happens next in the story or like reminds us remind us who this person is, they or like help me know about this person they'd like send that person a message and this this like person who knew the series inside and out from these like back notes would say like well you can't do this because like this person did this thing or like has this backstory <laughs> that would like conflict with what you're trying to do it was super interesting so like they're like they, the you're right the world was so big that they literally had to have a person on staff to tell about the world it's like a, their own historian wow <laughs> that yeah, is awesome. fantastic. Yeah. Um, you and I are both um, people of faith, followers of yeah. Jesus. And yeah. I, I was wondering how your faith has impacted your journey as an author. Yeah, that is that is a great question. Um, and, and a bit of a hard one, because for me, I, I like to write because I want anybody out there to to pick up what I write and enjoy it. And one of the things that, you know, I so growing up in in countries all over the world, um, I grew up with a lot of people that did not believe the same things that that I believed. And so I became um, and still think I am really comfortable uh, with with talking about things that like, like, are are well outside of the of the bible well outside of of you know those those 66 books and um and and so in a lot of ways um my my writing is kind of uh, uh separate from from my faith but um my faith is also a really integral part of of who i am and um and and in no way do i want what i am writing to be um in in opposition or against or or in any way reflecting um poorly the the things that that i i i believe most deeply um so so uh all of the writing that that i do um i want to have um just kind of like as a baseline uh we'll say we'll say i'm gonna probably use a fairly loaded statement or term here, Christian values and like, take that for what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, do, do the characters um, act in ways that, that uh, portray um, the, the things that we see in, in the Bible, patience, love, kindness, sacrifice um mm -hmm. of, of self for others one, one of the things um and and i kind of alluded to this earlier um one of the things uh about c.s lewis's um narnia series is that he specifically went into it saying like this is not a christian series and like 
you know, removed 60 years from when the, the series was written, it sure feels like it. And he said, like, well, of course it feels like it. It feels like it because I love Jesus that much. <laughs> and and so while I don't have a Christ figure within within mm-hmm. the Sundial Odysseys, my hope is that as people read it, they'll see like, oh, there are there are some strong parallels between the kinds of activities that we see in in the Bible and the kinds of activities that we're seeing the um, the, the the characters in in these books um, uh, doing. And, um, and so, and, and, and at the same time, like, I want anybody to be able to pick them up. I want anybody, anybody to be able to, to talk about them. And so, um, that's, yeah, that's super important to me too. Like that it, it, there, that it's a series that, um, encourages people to have conversations about, um, about cultures all over the world. Uh, because again, like I grew up in lots of places and I want people to understand uh, what's going on before, like, like we were saying before the, 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 the recording, um, there's a lot of confusion. It's a lot of prejudice. It's a lot of prejudice that we don't even realize that's happening out there. And, um, and in some very, very small ways, I'm hoping that this can help kids, uh, to see that, um, that there's, uh, people all around that are very similar to them that have the same kinds of fears and insecurities that, um, that uh, that they have, but that there um, is common ground, and that and that they don't have to feel like they're um, like those other people are are actually that different. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I, one of the things that I, I appreciate about um, what I'm seeing with your approach to writing is that. Um, you are approaching it wanting to um, tell a story, wanting to tell it well, wanting to help people grow and expand as they interact with your story and their characters um, without it being um, preachy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, the, I, I'm a firm believer that we need more Christians in the arts, whether that's writing, whether it's painting, whether it's what, whatever. We need more Christians who are going to do quality work that they, their character, their intent um, shows the love of Jesus, even if um, that is something that's underlying rather than overt. Um, And I have, I think there are um, only a couple of books, um, less than a handful, because I'm one of those people that if I start something, I usually finish it. Um, And even if it's painful, but I think two out of the three books that I remember starting and never finishing were overtly Christian books where I'm um, going through this and I'm like, okay, well, you've got this non-Christian character that, I mean, that this is, um, this is their, their verbiage. Everything is um, so tamed down so out of yeah. the um, ability of being anything like realistic yeah. um, for anyone who's actually been in the real world yeah. that <laughs> um, <laughs> that that it just I, I one book in particular I I bought and I actually borrowed money during my um, internship um, in college to yeah. buy this book because a professor had talked about how great it was yeah. and I I think I made it 60 70 pages into a 300 plus page book and yeah. I spent more time complaining about how bad the writing was yeah. than I, I I did actually reading the book and finally I just was like all right this is not a good use of my time um i'm just winding up more and more angry um because of how poorly this is written so um (laughs) i put it on a bookshelf never to be seen again um or at least never to be opened again (laughs) and i i really appreciate the fact that you have a heart to do this well and um i i think that 
as as we intentionally give voice to give voice and exposure to authors and artists like yourself that are going to do a good job we will actually have greater opportunity to share our faith yeah yeah um and and you know what man that's like that's very much my my hope i and you know what this was a conversation 20 years ago uh, thereabouts when when we were in school and mm -hmm. and it's hard to see like oh it's been 20 years give or take and like it's still pretty bad um and uh and 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 you know what i've had more than a handful of people come up and 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 say like hey are you going to write a story about like characters from the bible and 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 as m amazing as as some of the characters that we see in the bible are um it's it's like, there's a lot of people that want to that want to cover that space um there's mm -hmm. not a lot of people that want to cover some random like person from north africa that nobody except for the <laughs> handful of north africans have ever heard of um yeah. but it's still an amazing story that that uh is definitely worth telling so um yeah I, it's it's interesting to to kind of go through those uh those conversations with people and it's it's hard to see some of the things that I've uh that I've that I've seen over the years in this space thank you for sharing that um yeah what advice would you give to someone that has an artistic big dream that God has placed on their heart um to in but that maybe they're feeling intimidated by it what what advice would you give good you should feel intimidated <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man there's so many pieces of advice i would give um and and this kind of like we're going to go back to the back to the sabbath example here they're like it's all it's all part of the stew um and so I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of word vomit a lot of different things. And I don't think any one of them is the right one. I don't think you can really do a big artistic vision without all of them. Mm -hmm. um, rest, uh, a, a good work rhythm, um, a support system of people around you, uh, a, a support system um, within your own personal life because you're going to deal with days where you wake up and you think what I did yesterday was garbage. Like, like it, it was, it was awful. Like, or I did no work on my project yesterday. That's horrible. Um, and, and having that internal uh, or, um, or, 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 uh, you know, spirit led, um, uh, support framework is going to see you through those hard days. Um, about four or five, I don't know. Um, patience. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I ever heard was most people think they can accomplish more uh, than they can actually accomplish in one year, and they drastically underestimate what they can accomplish in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um a willingness to call garbage garbage, um, a willingness to have a really, really thick skin and to have people tell you like, this is, this is a bad idea. One of my, one of my good friends, um, he was telling me like, Collins, like your, your, your landing page sucks. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like you've got to do something about it. And I'm like, well, I can't really do anything about it. Like it's set in stone and like, it doesn't open up until like, I'm ready to click, I'm ready to launch and I don't want to do it yet because I haven't told enough people. So like, can you give me something else? And he's like, well, you could probably do a YouTube video and you could make that public and you could do it better. And I was like, you know what? I already did a video. Like, that's pretty easy. All I have to do is like make it public on YouTube and that does, it will cost me like 10 minutes. But but like, and and I had another friend, my, my editor told me like, hey, your landing page sucks. Like do something about the front cover. <laughs> okay, get it, guys. Like it's not good. Like, we need to make some changes here. <laughs> um, and and she said like put the put a picture of the actual characters on the front page. Okay, I can put a picture of the characters on the front page. But like, 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 
and that's part of again part of that that support system like having people around you that are gonna like not give you like oh it's nice like having people that are gonna give you some really hard uncomfortable truths your work's never mm -hmm. gonna get better if you don't get those hard uncomfortable truths um having a group of people in mind like i the for when i first wrote when i first started writing it was i'm gonna write just to just to write because i love to write love it mm -hmm. and then it was well huh i wrote just to write and like nobody really understood why i was writing and then my daughter started reading the um a to z mysteries and and i i read it along with her and i was like oh oh i get it like I could do something like this, but like in a like in 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 my area of expertise with like history and culture and 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 um and I was like and I'm pretty sure like my kids would like it and I know a lot of people with kids that are about my age so like I could definitely go and talk with some of them about about that that project and like make sure that like I've got several people on board that are saying yeah this is a good a good you know project or a good product that that I like um, and so. And so know who like know who would want to participate with your with your work, um, and and uh, like I think the the last piece of advice would be um, don't get discouraged and and it's kind of in line with some of the other pieces of advice but like there's going to be some days that are really hard and oh this is not quite my last piece it was second to last piece. Um, <laughs> And, and, and if you are committed on your vision, um, commit on that vision. Okay. Second, second to the last, I've got two more. Um, another, uh, set a goal, like, like set your goal and, and like, that might be a timeline goal. That might be a scope goal. That might be a whole lot of different goals, but like set some goals and, and like, make sure they're written down, make sure you're keeping track of them, make sure you're on top of them. Um, my wife and I love setting goals and they have driven us far in life. Um, and then uh, the last piece, get a good job. Like you're, you're not going to make money on your passion project um, probably ever. Uh, you're not going to make money on your artistic project probably ever. Uh, you, if you're super, super lucky, if you're in the like one half of 1% of artists, you'll do okay. Mm -hmm. But like, don't expect to make money off of it. Get a good job and support yourself. And then, and then when you have time, work on your passion project until you've got enough time or money to be able to work on it more. Um, but, but it's a, it's an art, it's a craft. You've, you're going to take, it's going to take you some time to get to a place that you can do it and you don't want to starve. I've done that. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah. So those are my pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious, you, you talked a lot about the support system, and I'm wondering, have you, how have you dealt with people who weren't necessarily a good fit for your support system? Oh, my that... gosh. Um, that's a hard question, because um, there have been some people that have been bad for the support system and and even like super specifically within this project um mm -hmm. there have been a couple of people that i've interacted with that i'm like oh you are highly qualified to be in my in my like support group you are offering your support but i have seen you do some like not super cool things mm -hmm. to people in the past and like if we're gonna be honest i think that like even though you have some amazing talent to bring, like that is not worth the risk. Um, like I am not willing to take take the chance that you are gonna like decide that that there's something about what I'm doing that you don't like, and you are gonna go on on like a a metaphorical rampage, and I'm gonna pay the price for that. Um, mm -hmm. That like there's there's gonna be there's gonna be some people, and so I think like in that situation like obviously be polite, obviously be kind, like lead with politeness, lead with kindness, lead with love, but, but accept like, Hey, I do not need to continue engaging with you. Like I, I, we can call it, we can call it quits here. Like I have, I have done my, my, I'm going to be good to you, but I'm not going to continue seeking your assistance. It also helps if you have a backup, like, Oh, like, thank you so much for this. 
this is already lined up. And so, and so I appreciate your, your support in this, but I'm, I'm in, I'm in good shape right now. Um, and, uh, and so like that, like that kind of interaction, uh, generally helps a lot. Mm -hmm. That's, that's some great insight. And, um, not always a walk in the park to, to navigate those relationships. Re relationships aren't easy to begin with, even the good ones. Yeah. And so um, I think there are a lot of people out there that um, even have love and compassion and want the best for us but um their way of um their way of doing that sometimes turns into a um just just give up um you're wasting your time um or a it, it becomes so concerned about the peripheral things that it doesn't necessarily support the the vision and the direction that someone who's creative is going, yeah. Um, yeah. someone who's got a big vision for the future. And yeah, sometimes we have to take detours, um, but that doesn't mean that we, we give up um, in the process. Absolutely. And, um, and so it has been just awesome connecting with you, Collins. Thank you so much for, uh, for sharing again, everyone, this has been, um, CL Van Lu, and he has just dropped on Kickstarter, uh, the desert queen book number one in the sundial odyssey series. Um, I am extremely excited about reading this to my own kids and i'm sure that you will appreciate this work of art that he has put his i'm sure blood sweat and tears into and i hope that you have been blessed and enjoyed this opportunity to connect um Thank you so much, Collins, for taking this opportunity and for sharing your heart and your passion project with us. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate it. And thank you for taking some time with me tonight. It's, you know, like it's time away from the family. It's time away from uh, things that you could be doing. So I, I appreciate you, uh, yeah, taking some time to sit down and talk and excited to see where things go. And I, I hope you guys really enjoy the series. Let me know, okay? Absolutely. I am certain that we will. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. You too.